In a previous video, I leave the link to this in the description below, I had outlined that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, were uh, considering a coverage or a different coverage for monoclonal antibodies that are directed against amyloid plaques, and that is for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. And finally, now on April the 7th of 2022, CMS have actually announced their final Medicaid national coverage determination, which covers FDA approved uh, monoclonal antibodies aimed at uh, preventing formation of amyloid plaques. The most prominent uh, candidate of these types of antibodies is without doubt Biogen's uh, Adjulhelm, which also is actually a very controversial drug. It is aimed at preventing the formation of uh, amyloid plaques. However, its uh, efficacy and ability to well, prevent or at least uh, slow down and potentially stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease notably the decline in cognition, is actually still very controversial. This is probably along with its hefty price tag, which has been slashed by more than 50% by Biogen in the meantime, though the uh, likely reason why Medicare, who otherwise would have to cover uh, FDA-approved drugs, um, have now really <clears throat> made the final ruling to only cover such drugs um, under the evidence uh, development um, yeah, criteria. And this has the following implications. First of all, I'd like to point out to all the viewers of my channel who have a profound interest in another company tackling Alzheimer's disease, which is of course no other than Cassava Sciences. The good news is that the mechanism of action that Cassava's Simufolam has um, or aims at has nothing to do with amyloid plaques. It's in fact, uh, Simufolam is uh, targeting the misfolded uh, filament A protein and seems to have very good results in terms of slowing down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. So cassava investors or any other company working on other disease modifying drugs for Alzheimer's disease that are not monoclonal antibodies aimed at the slow down or preventing formation of amyloid plaques can breathe easily. However, those that work on precisely those, and in my previous video I had outlined other companies who are working on similar monoclonal antibodies, well, they all will fall into exactly this um, uh, ruling. And what the ruling here uh, states is the following. So any such drugs which are FDA approved under the evidence of efficacy of a change in a surrogate endpoint, such as, for example, amyloid reduction, can be considered to be covered, but only if the patient, well, first of all, clinical efficacy, of course, has to be there. They can be covered if the patient is actually participating in a randomized control clinical trial uh, under the uh, investigational new drug application. And for those drugs that are FDA approved based on evidence of efficacy from a direct measure of clinical benefit can be covered if they are participating in a CMS approved prospective uh, comparative study. So not outright coverage for any patient, anyone who wants uh, Medicaid to cover their cost of Adjuhelm has no choice but to be enrolled in a CMS approved uh, prospective study. Also in my previous video I had outlined several of the additional hurdles or obstacles that such a CMS uh, approved well clinical study actually imposes on potential participants or anyone for that matter interested in having access to uh, some of these new monoclonal antibodies. And if there is no way around it basically yeah, it's a limitation, so not everybody will have outright access or paid access actually to Adjuhelm or any similar drugs. And that is some of the criticism. On the other hand, of course, it is understandable that the cost of these drugs is expected to be substantially quite high. And therefore, 
the ability for Medicare to pay for these drugs um, is also of concern, of course, to the agency as well. So it is somewhat understandable that <clears throat> they would really like to ensure that the clinical evidence and benefit is proven and is there. Clearly, though, these CMS-approved uh, studies will follow after FDA studies, which were there in the first place to actually uh, approve the drug. So it may be somewhat redundant, and certainly many of the aspects that the CMS study criteria um, are actually asking or calling for certainly are already part of most phase two or three clinical trials. So the aspect of somewhat of a redundancy still remains in my personal opinion. And it is a shame that not every patient, um, you know, has the choice or has access then to these types of drugs. I am also though aware that Agile Helm, of course, is quite controversial. The side effect profile is significant and the clinical benefits are still doubted by many. So you have to come up with or make up your own mind ultimately if this decision by CMS makes really sense to you or not. Um, certainly, I can only reiterate my personal opinion on this, that yes, it does limit the access to these types of drugs, but perhaps in the long term, in the long run, may help to preserve actually the funds of Medicare, Medicaid um, for medications that are truly have long-term proven uh, track record. And this, though, oftentimes can also <clears throat> be obtained through post-market surveillance or pharmacovigilance, um, where approved studies or approved drugs um, yeah, get monitored for adverse events and also the uh, long-term efficacy that, you know, as the general population has access to the drug, more, more people take the medication compared to the limited set in a clinical trial. And of course, more real-world evidence data gets generated like this over time. So then here, according to a CMS, this paragraph sums up quite nicely. So the final decision, according to them, allows for flexibility in a less rigorous study designed for anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies that have been approved by the FDA through the traditional approval process for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease based upon evidence of efficacy from a direct measure of clinical benefit. For anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies that have demonstrated a meaningful clinical benefit through the FDA traditional approval process, <clears throat> that amyloid uh, monoclonal antibody is eligible to be used on a label for FDA-approved indications in clinical studies or other prospective comparative studies to answer the clinical evidence uh, determination questions specified in the national coverage determination. While the degree and rigor of the clinical evidence <clears throat> determination studies for a particular uh, anti-amyloid monoclonal antibody will be determined in large part by the strength of evidence from the initial successful clinical trials that have led to FDA approval of this drug. One example <clears throat> of such a study is the data generated through routine, routine clinical practice or a registry. Such registry data may then be used to assess whether the outcomes seen in carefully controlled clinical trials are reproduced in the real world or in real world use and in a broad range of patient groups. So there you have it. CMS have uh, spoken and given us their final verdict on this topic of monoclonal antibodies. I leave the link to this particular website in the description below if you'd like to take a look at the uh, question and answers that are listed here. Um, interesting, but it only impacts one particular class of uh, drugs aimed at Alzheimer's disease and not all. I hope this video will help you to understand how certain developers of monoclonal antibodies against Alzheimer's disease may actually face additional hurdles before their drugs can actually be covered widely um, with the general population outside of the context of additional clinical trials. I hope you found this content useful. If you did, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel.